So the pubs are back open again, whoop a dee do and you went a bit mental and spent all of your lockdown savings on a bathtub's worth of celebratory booze. But unfortunately, you then also went and buggered your phone by dousing it in white lightning or dropping it in your pint of Buckfast. Whoopsies. Well, never fear, because in 2021, you've got a tidy choice of budget-friendly smartphones that are well worth seeking out. Motorola, Oppo, Nokia, among many others, offer slick, shiny slabs boasting brilliant life, flexible camera setups, and enough grunt to blaze through games like PUBG and Call of Duty for a budget under £200. Now, I've personally been reviewing as many of these budget-friendly smartphones as I can fit into my pants, and so here's my roundup of the best budget smartphones that will cost you under 200 quid right now in summer 2021. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! So one of the best cheapy phones you'll find at this price point is Motorola's Moto G30, a handset that boasts solid specs and a slick, clean version of Android. As far as looks go, the Moto G30 sure isn't anything special. Like most budget phones, this is another plastic blower offering little in the way of frills or flare, although it is at least splash resistant if you have yourself a bit of an accident. And what you get here is a very lovable stock Android experience, which has been bolstered by a shed load of bonus Motorola features, stuff that we all know and love, like that excellent karate chop torch effort and lots of gesture controls as well. The 6.5 inch IPS screen is unfortunately only a 720p res effort, so it's not exactly supremely crisp, but those visuals are reasonably punchy and you've got a 90 hertz refresh, so everything looks buttery smooth. The Snapdragon 662 chipset can handle fast-paced games like Call of Duty Mobile, and Motorola's dedicated game and mode can manage resources out of sight and block pesky notifications from buggering up your concentration. And that 5000 milliamp battery means the Moto G30 will keep on going all day long, even with plenty of screen on time, no matter what you're up to, basically. And also, the camera tech is very respectable for this price point. That 64 megapixel primary sensor does typically struggle in strong or low light, but it can otherwise snap some very decent looking pics of the fam, although the video mode does top off at full HD resolution. And all of the other features that you'd really hope would be on board the Moto G30, but you wouldn't necessarily expect at this sort of price point, are present and correct. So you've got NFC for your contactless payments, you've got a good bit of headphone jack action, and you've got micro SD expandability, so you can boost that storage when needed. So all in all, a couple of little issues aside, like the 720p display, this is a very tasty package for a budget-friendly price. Another option at this price point is the Moto G50, which unlike the G30, boasts full 5G support, but it does also strip back some of the specs to keep the asking price under 200 quid. So this time around, instead of a 600 series Snapdragon, you've got a Snapdragon 480 chipset running the show. That's fine for your everyday shenanigans, although you will notice some little slowdown here and there, such as, for instance, when you're booting up the camera app. You also get a simpler 48 megapixel primary shooter, plus less storage than the G30, although at least both mode rollers support micro SD expandability. Besides those grumbles, many of the other features are the same as the G30, from the 90Hz 720p display to the 5000mAh battery. And you get that same clean Android experience, although don't expect updates to come flying in. One of the only real problems with Motorola smartphones is they're generally not very well supported in the long term, so if you are hoping for lots of OS and security updates, you're generally waiting a bit longer than you would do from some rivals like Nokia. As long as you don't mind that too much, then there's lots to love about Motorola smartphones, especially the asking price. And actually, for under £200, there is another Motorola blow you can bag yourself in summer 2021, the Moto G9 Plus, which is a bit more of an oldie, but still a goldie. This is another plastic blower with a stock Android experience and an IPS screen, this time a flippin' massive 6.8 incher with a sharper full HD plus resolution and a hearty squirt of HDR10 plus support. Although unlike the G30 and the G50, there is no variable refresh rate. Performance is pretty smooth thanks to the Snapdragon 730G chipset, with Qualcomm's capable Adreno 618 GPU and Moto's gaming tools making for a very satisfying gaming experience. It's once again a 5000 milliamp battery, which again can keep you going all day long, even with plenty of screen on time, thanks to that efficient 700 series Snapdragon chipset. And like the other Motorola blows, the G30 and the G50, you once again get a headphone jack, you got your NFC support, and yeah, that tasty bit of micro SD action too. This package is rounded off by a perfectly respectable 64 megapixel primary camera backed by an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle effort, just like the G30. Plus, you've got some macro and depth sensor shenanigans, all perfectly fine for everyday shooting, even in fairly testing conditions. And if the sound of Motorola's Moto G9 Plus didn't quite butter your muffin, well, maybe check out the Moto G9 Power instead. It's another hand filling 6.8 inch plastic blower that lacks thrills and excitement, but more than makes up for it with respectable specs. 
Performance is reasonably dependable thanks to the Snapdragon 662 platform backed by 4 gigs of RAM. You can even get stuck into some light gaming if you want to blow off some steam by blowing off someone else's face. Where the Moto G9 power really shines is the excellent battery life. The other Motorola smartphones are very, very good with their 5,000 milliamp cells. The power ups that to 6,000 milliamps. So if you're going away for an entire weekend, you don't want to bother packing your charger, no worries. And this Moto is fine for media streaming too, although the IPS screen drops from Full HD to 720p resolution, while the stereo speaker setup has also been culled, but thankfully not the headphone jack. Meanwhile, that triple lens rear camera, spearheaded by a 64 megapixel sensor, is unsurprisingly limited, and you lose the Plus model's 8 megapixel ultra wide angle effort. Although the Moto G9 Power can still take good looking pics in respectable lighting, helped along by the AI smarts. Now another brand that offers straight-laced stock Android smartphones is Nokia, this time with the added benefit of regular, dependable OS and security updates. And the Nokia 5.4 is definitely one you'll want to check out at this sort of price point at around sort of 150-ish quid in summer 2021. This 6.4-inch smartphone suffers from standard Nokia tropes like the fat lip harboring some needless branding, plus that always pointless assistant button, but this Dusk model is rather fetching in a moody, emo kind of way. Thankfully, the Nokia 5.4 has now been updated to Android 11, and you've got a good bit of Android 12 action to look forward to later in 2021, or possibly early 2022, depending on just how quickly Nokia gets its skates on with that one. Plus, you've got three years of security updates to look forward to as well, which is rather reassuring. You've got NFC support here in the UK and dual SIM support, plus a separate micro SD slot to expand the storage. Meanwhile, that IPS screen is a mere 720p panel, but it's fine for streaming YouTube or browsing the old internet. Power and Proceedings is the Snapdragon 662 chipset again, and once again, this is fine for gaming on the go. While the 4000 milliamp battery is near impossible to drain in a single day, unless you really punish this thing. And slap there, on the back end of the Nokia 5.4, you've got a 48 megapixel primary camera sensor. This proves absolutely fine for shooting every day photos, although the video quality was a bit of a mess, lots of focal pop and other issues. So if you want a smartphone to shoot lots of home movies of the kitty winks or whatever, I would definitely say look elsewhere. Now one possible alternative also from Nokia is the Nokia G20, which I haven't unfortunately had the chance to test out yet, but at 135 quid, it does sound like a fairly solid budget offering. The Nokia G20 sports a 6.517 inch display. Yeah, that's right, 6.517 inches precisely. That's Nokia going into full on teenage lad measuring his thingy mode right there. It's a 720p panel, not full HD sadly, and the G20 is powered by a MediaTek Helio G35 chipset, which seems to be all right for simple everyday use. The Nokia G20's 5050 milliamp battery is a match for most budget rivals, while the quad lens rear camera is headlined by a 48 megapixel main sensor with a simple 8 megapixel selfie cam up front. So as I say, I sadly haven't had the chance to personally test out the Nokia G20 just yet, but hopefully soon make sure you poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell to see that hot content when it goes live. But if you're looking for a nice simple stock Android experience for your everyday shenanigans like messaging and stuff like that, you're not going to want to lean too heavy on the likes of the camera and you're certainly not going to want to do any gaming or anything, then it looks like the G20 might be a respectable option. Personally though, I'd probably rather grab myself an Oppo A53 which costs as little as 130 quid right now. This phone is a proper superstar, offering a smooth everyday experience, two days of battery life and the standard stuff like NFC and expandable storage. That display is a mere HD one once more, but it's not bad at all for kicking back with some YouTube or whatever, and impressively you've got a 90Hz max refresh rate too, not to mention a stereo speaker setup and strong audio chops. However, it's not all good news. Oppo is being very slow with the Android updates, and of course not everyone will get on with the Color OS launcher as well, which is quite a big fat heavy one sat there on top of Android. It does add some great features, but also can be rather clunky in places. The A53 Snapdragon 460 chipset and 120Hz touch response rate meant I stood a reasonable chance against the hordes of unwashed school kids when stumbling my way through online slog fests. And that 13 megapixel primary camera does a decent job of daily snaps, certainly for this asking price. Now next up in this roundup of the best budget smartphones costing under 200 quid is the excellent Poco X3 Pro from Xiaomi. And yes, admittedly the standard price for the Poco X3 Pro is just over 200 quid, but Xiaomi regularly puts on sales where it dips to just a Nats pube under that price tag and it's well worth waiting out and grabbing it when you see it at that sort of discounted price. The Poco X3 Pro is essentially a reinvigorated, updated version of the original Poco X3 NFC from last year. The main update being a massive performance boost courtesy of the Snapdragon 860 chipset that is packed inside. 
So the Poco X3 Pro can handle everything you want, even a bit of Genshin impact on low to medium settings. That 6.67 inch Full HD Plus IPS display can pump out sharp visuals and reasonably punchy colours, plus the adaptive refresh rate maxes out at 120Hz. There's a decent stereo speaker setup, plus a headphone jack and reliable Bluetooth streaming as well when you want to go wireless. You've got NFC support for your contactless payments, you've got a responsive edge mounted fingerprint sensor, you've got all day battery life, basically everything you could bloody well need. And I really like the Poco's 48 megapixel main camera sensor, which captures sharp pictures of even the most squirmy of subjects, as well as respectable 4K footage. In fact, beyond the slightly garish design, there's not really much to dislike about the Poco X3 Pro. It's proper lush. Of course, not everyone will get on with Xiaomi's MIUI 12 launcher, which is still very divisive indeed. It's quite a heavy launcher, throws in quite a lot of great bonus features, but it can also be a little bit quirky at times, shall we say, and there's generally a lot of crapware stuffed onto Poco and Xiaomi smartphones too. You also don't have the added reassurance of the guaranteed updates, the OS updates and the security updates of those Nokia smartphones, but as long as you can put up with all of that, then there's a lot to love about the Poco X3 Pro as far as the hardware and everything goes. If you find your budget's a little bit too tight to stretch up to that Poco X3 Pro, well an alternative option that's a lot cheaper is the Poco M3 Pro 5G which just freshly launched here in the UK. This serves up another highly respectable and slightly smaller 6.5 inch IPS screen plus headphone jack and reliable Bluetooth support so media fans will love it, especially when streaming video over a 5G network. Gaming is certainly possible as well thanks to the Dimensity 700 platform which adds that 5G connectivity, while the 5000 mAh battery means all day play, no worries at all. We've got another 48 megapixel primary camera sensor slapped on the back of the Poco M3 Pro 5G as well and this is decidedly limited when the conditions aren't great but otherwise absolutely fine for just simple everyday snaps and home movies. And yeah, there are definitely a few quirks to this Poco smartphone as well as you'd expect at this sort of budget price point. Again, so go check out my full in-depth review for all you need to know. Now before I bugger right off, I'd also like to throw a bit of love at the Realme 8 5G, which these days, summer 2021, you can pick up for just a shade under 200 quid and it offers some pretty respectable specs for that price, including of course a good bit of 5G support again, as the name kind of heavily suggests. The Realme 8 5G isn't as fully featured as the nifty Realme 8 Pro, but that MediaTek Dimensity 700 chipset makes for a respectable performance. You've got a 90 hz IPS screen which is slick and sharp, and that long lasting battery life means zero stress when you're out and about. Again, check out my unboxing for a full tour of this blower. Now I've got videos live here on Techspert with all of these budget blowers except for the uh, Nokia G20 as I mentioned earlier, hopefully going to cover that one soon. So definitely if any of them uh, particularly buttered your muffins then definitely go check those out. And it's perfectly possible to get a handful of other budget smartphones for under £200 right now in 2021. For instance, Samsung uh, offers a selection on the likes of Amazon and its very own website as well, but whatever you do, steer clear of the Samsung Galaxy A12. It may look very enticing with its low asking price and sort of all right specs, but it is very, very clunky and just generally annoying. So anyway, that's my pick at the best budget smartphones you can grab for under £200 right now in the UK. But if I missed out your own particular favourites, definitely clue me in down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week. Cheers!